Hey everybody, Josh from Populi here. We wanna look at student grade calculations today. This video is probably useful mostly for instructors who are talking to students about issues that might come up with their grade or students who just wanna understand more about how their grade works in Populi. So let's start off by looking at a weird situation that can happen with your grades. Let's say you have all your grades back except one. We'll go look at this for this student here. So got all their grades except that final draft on their paper. And you can see here, the student has a 98 in the course, doing great. Then you hear back from your instructor that you uh, got a grade on that final paper. So let's go put that grade in. It was a 98, good job, great grade. But then when we input that 98, you can see here that we get a 97.36. We remove that grade, 98, Input that grade, it goes down to 97.36. You would assume you have a 98, you get a 98, you're going to at least stay at a 98. So then when you drop down below that, it might be a little disconcerting. It might make you upset. You might throw furniture around. You might go to your instructor and throw furniture at your instructor. And even though you don't actually injure your instructor, you're very weak, you're not able to heave the sofa over the desk and actually strike your instructor, it does change your relationship with that person fundamentally. Your relationship's just different. So we wanna save you and your instructor that kind of hassle. We're gonna look at how this can actually be a correct result. Warning, this does require some math, we'll get into a little bit of math, particularly at the end. It's not my specialty. I had on the SAT, high verbal scores, low math scores. One of the many things I've done to disappoint my mother. So we're gonna work through some of the different things that trip people up when they're looking at results like this um, without spending all that much time getting into the math side of things. The central issue is weirdly complex and it has to do with the fact that displaying a student's grade in a software, an in-progress grade, is not all that straightforward. So let's say that we have a course with 10 assignments, they're all worth 10 points a piece. You could earn a total of 100 points on that course. Let's say then that you're at the midterm, so you've received grades for five assignments, but you have five assignments that you have not received grades for. Let's say that your assignments scores look something like this, eight out of 10, seven out of 10, so on. And what you've ended up with in that course is 42 points out of 100. That's a fully accurate score. 42 points out of 100 is what you have currently. However, is that the most helpful way for you as a student to think about your grade in that class, your progress. Because technically it's a failing grade, 42 out of 100, you're failing. Mostly due to the fact that you haven't had a chance to complete the rest of the work in the course. So that's one way of setting things up. Another option would be to look at all of the assignments that the student has currently completed and then just take those into account. So just look at those first five assignments and see how that student has scored out of those assignments there. In that situation, the student would have a 42 out of 50 or 98 out of 100. I had on the SAT, high verbal scores, low math scores. So now they're passing, everything looks good. The student's in progress grade currently excuses all of the assignments that they've not yet received a grade for. The second option there is what Populi does. We generate an in-progress grade for the student so they can see for all of the work that they've completed, what their current score is, how they stand in the course, and then we excuse all of the, all of the work that they don't have grades entered for. That's the in-progress grade. Now that previous example is really straightforward. We just have 10 assignments, each worth 10 points. But things get pretty complicated once you start adding in assignment groups with different weights. 
And that takes us back to that initial problem that we looked at, where we have a student who receives a high grade and somehow it looks like that brings their grade down. What's going on there is that it's basically the result of one of the things we talked about, the fact that those assignment grades are excused until they have um, something entered in there, combined with the, the additional complexities of assignment groups and how those affect the grade. So let's go to the assignments tab and have a look at um, those assignment groups. You can see that the paper assignment group has 40% of the overall grade. Let's go back to the grade book and there um, we'll edit those grades and have a look at the grades that are feeding into that grade currently. So that would be these three assignments right here. We've got the outline, the rough draft, and the topic. And basically what the student has with those three grades is 100% of the grade. So they're currently, because of their scores on those initial assignments for that category, have 100% of 40%. We're getting all of that 40% of that grade at this point. Let's look at what happens when we pop in that 98, as we've already seen. That brings the grade down because now what's happening is the student is getting less than 100% of that 40%. Even though this is a high score, it's not 100%. So they were previously getting 100% of the 40%. Now they're getting something more like 98.5% of that 100% and that's bringing their grade down a little bit. That can be shocking, but it does happen. It's not a bug, so please refrain from throwing a chaise longue at your instructor. We're talking pretty generally about this, but I did want to just show you the formula that we're using so that you know what's working there, and if you want to recreate this for yourself, you'd be able to. The formula is the sum of earned group points divided by possible group points times group weight divided by total weight. And that's the sum then for all groups. So for the paper assignment group, you would have 123 points out of 125 or 0.984. And then the group is 40 out of 100, so that's 0.4. Then we multiply those, so that's 0.984 times 0.4, and that gives us 39.36%. And then you would do the same for the rest of the assignment groups. You would just go through those, you would get those percentages there, and then you add them all up, and that's where we get that 97.36 that the student's grade is coming down to. That matches the Populi calculation. Hooray. <laughs> So that's it for looking at student grade calculations. There are other things that can come up, but this really covers the bulk of the confusion that we see in support requests. We'd appreciate it if you'd hit that subscribe button, and then you can also hit the notifications bell, ding, 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 so you can get an alert every time we post a new video. You might as well also just click the like button if you would like to. I've been Josh, you've been great. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for using Populi. Bye-bye.